hallelujah. We want to invite the Holy Spirit in to come and take over this place. Not just this place, but we want to take over this service. Come on, New Hope family. Will you worship with me? Here it is. Every yoke is 
Good morning, family. Thank you so much again for joining us on this Sunday morning. I pray that you've had a great week. And I pray that our praise and worship blessed you again as much as it has blessed me. I'm so grateful that you have once again chosen to come and hang out with us on this morning here at New Hope. I pray whether you are a member or whether or not you're just someone that has determined that you're going to follow us uh, on social media, I pray that something will be said or done that will encourage you in your walk with Christ, strengthen your resolve to live more for him. And I pray that this series uh, on forgiveness, uh, what's in it for me, has a, again been a blessing for you as I know that it has been for me. I also want you to know that we are praying for you. We're praying that through all of the turmoil, all of the issues of our land, we pray that God has been able to give you a peace. We pray that God has continued to sustain you and your family. And we also want you to know that if you have been touched by COVID, if you've been touched by the hurricane, Laura, if you've been touched by unemployment, or whatever the situation may be going on in your families, we just want you to know that we care and that we are praying for you. And if you desire for a personal word of prayer, by all means, join us on, uh, on www.newhopeclute.church. Send us a message. Let us pray with and for you specifically, as we, again, we do care about what's going on in your life. Amen? Well, family, as we continue our series, again, forgiveness, what's in it for me? And on today, we conclude our third installment uh, entitled, How Do I Know If I've Forgiven Someone? How? How do I know that I've let it go? How do I know that I'm no longer struggling uh, uh, on the inside? How do I know that not only has God given me a peace, but that I've allowed that same peace to, be, to transcend from me to those that have offended me. How do I know? And I pray that through these series of messages that uh, you get some sort of revelation as to what God truly desires from you as it relates to forgiveness. And not only how it can be a blessing to someone else, but how it can be a blessing to you and those that are, uh, are immediately around you. Amen? Well, family... If you don't mind, will you join me in a word of prayer as we begin to move forward? Our Father in heaven, we once again thank you so much 
for who you are. We thank you for forgiveness of our sin. We thank you, Father, for the favor in which you have uh, shown us. Why? Because you've allowed us to once again open our eyes to see a brand new day. So, Father, we praise your name because we know that we aren't worthy, but we know that because of the love that you have for us, that we are yet in the land of the living. Father, I pray blessings to those that are under my weak voice right now. I pray, Father, that you would touch them, bless their homes, bless their families, bless their finances, bless their health, Father. I pray, Father, for those that may be struggling uh, with COVID. Pray, Father, for those that may be struggling with unemployment. I pray, Father, for those that may be struggling from the aftermath of Hurricane Laura. I pray in the name of Jesus. That is the only you can, Father, that not only will you bring forth clarity, but you give them a peace of mind knowing that all things are working out for the good of them who love you and are called according to your purpose. Now, Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you, Father, would speak, Father, through your word. Use me, Father, as, as a broken vessel, Father, I pray, Father, that something will be said or done on today that would strengthen my brothers and sisters. But, Lord, most of all, Lord, I pray that something will be said, Father, for those that have yet to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would allow them to stand saying, what must I do to be saved? And, Father, I also pray, Father, for those that may be struggling Father, with forgiveness, harboring anger and malice, Father. Uh, Father, har uh, 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 harboring those ill feelings on the inside, not understanding, Father, that they're, what, what's really going on is that it's, it's causing them, Father, to die slowly on the inside. It's bringing about sickness. It's bringing a, 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 about issues, mental and emotional. But, Lord, I thank you. Because when you allowed me to forgive, Father, you gave me a peace that surpassed all understanding. So, Father, I pray now that same blessing for those that are listening to me right now. I pray now, Father, that relationships will be restored. I pray now, Father, that health will be restored. I pray now, Father, that emotional stability will be restored in the name of Jesus. Now, move me out of the way. Have your way, Lord. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful and careful to give your name glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. How do I know if I have forgiven someone? Part two. Well, family, on last week we, we read in Genesis 45, 1 through 15, that about the reconciliation of Joseph and and his brothers, and, and, and the, the text said that Joseph's brothers had sold him into slavery into Egypt. We all know the story, and there he was unjustly accused and convicted and imprisoned for, for something that he did not do. But God's family, I have learned that he, he was using these experiences to shape Joseph, not for Joseph's purposes, but for his purposes. And let me just pause there parenthetically and to let you know that, for, that what you're going through today, what you're dealing with right now, whether it be health challenges, whether it be job challenges, whether it be challenges from natural occurrences, whatever the situation may be, I want you to know today that God is using these experiences. He's using your challenges to shape you to be a blessing for the kingdom of God. I know some of you don't want to hear that because some of us don't want to go through challenges. Some of us don't want to deal with pain and hurt. Some of us don't want to have to deal with obstacles. But can I share something with you? If you are a born again believer in Jesus Christ know this that whatever you're going through it's all for the glory of God now let me get back to our to, to our message on this morning God bless you but but now Joseph the story went on last week to say that while he was in prison Joseph got acquainted with Pharaoh's cupbearer and his his baker 
who had also been sent to jail. He, he interpreted dreams for each of them, and each of those dreams came to pass. The baker was hanged, but the cupbearer was restored to his position. And because of what he had done, Joseph begged the cupbearer to put in a good word for him with, with Pharaoh, but the cupbearer forgot Joseph's plea. Two years later, the Bible says that when Pharaoh had dreams that, that no one could interpret, the cupbearer remembered Joseph. He was summoned and he interpreted the dreams for Pharaoh. And he said that there would be seven years of, of, of plenty followed by seven years of famine. And Egypt needed to take advantage of those seven years of plenty for the last seven. And the Bible says that Pharaoh was so impressed with, uh, that he made Joseph second in command only to himself and appointed him to be in charge, making preparations for the seven years of famine. And under Joseph's leadership, not only did Egypt have plenty during the years of famine, but it goes on to say that the people in neighboring lands also found help in Egypt. And now this is where Joseph's brothers come in the picture. They, the Bible says that they came to Egypt for help. And by the time God allowed these brothers to come to Egypt, he had already worked it out through Joseph to forgive his brothers. And the Bible says that they were reconciled. And as we consider Joseph's example, on last week we were given one that that, that, that if we've truly been able to forgive those that have offended us, that first of all, we won't be angry with God. We won't be angry with God. Second of all, we, we found out that we won't want our brothers and our sisters to be fearful of, of us. Second of all, we, we learned that we will not want our brothers or sisters to feel guilty about what they did. And last but not least, we wanted to, we wanted to, uh, we, if we've been truly been, for, if we've forgiven our brothers and sisters, we definitely wouldn't want them to be humiliated. In other words, we don't want to put all their business out in the street. Am I right about it? Well, family, you see, this kind of forgiveness is the only kind of forgiveness that can make reconciliation possible. See, there's no reason to forgive if your desire is not to be at some point, in some way, reconciled. You see, family, th this is what happened between Joseph and his brothers. Joseph and his brothers, he, he told them, retrieve my father and, and, and go and get all of your families. And, and, and the Bible says that they settled in Goshen, which was in Egypt. Which brings us to our, to our text today. If you'll turn with me to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, we're going to be reading from verse 15 through 21. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. My translation, the NIV reads, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs that we've done to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I, I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. And when their message came to him, the Bible says Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. Ah, 
but God intended for intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. Hallelujah. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. How do I know that I have forgiven someone? Family, as we conclude this particular installment of our series, I want us to look at two more indications of how you would know if you've genuinely forgiven someone. I know some of you, 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 you know, you say that you've forgiven. You say that it's, it's over. You say that it's put behind you. But if you were to be honest about it, you still got some anger. You still harboring some malice in your heart. You, you still don't desire any type of reconciliation. You're still putting, putting claims out there. You're still putting their business out there trying to, to distance yourself from the situation when God is saying at the end of the day, if you've really forgiven someone, you've not only let it go, but you have moved on. So family, the first one is, the first point I want you to get today is that our forgiveness will be unconditional. Yes, our forgiveness will be unconditional. Somebody needs to hear this. Let me say that one more time. Our forgiveness will be unconditional. It's right there in our text. Go with me again, verses 15 through 17. It says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back? for all the wrongs that we did to him. So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father has left these instructions before he died. This is what you ought to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. And when their message came to Joseph, the Bible says he wept. Well, family, now that their father had died, Joseph's brothers feared that, that somewhere down the road Joseph was going to change his mind. They, they, they thought that his forgiveness was conditional. They thought that his forgiveness was only in place while their father was still alive. And that the only reason that he was forgiving them is because of his dad. But they were wrong. The Bible suggests that Joseph's forgiveness had to do not with their dad, but his forgiveness had to do with his father. And I'm talking about his father, God in heaven. See, Joseph's forgiveness of his brothers had nothing to do with anything around him. It had, but it had everything to do with what was on the inside of Joseph. And God had placed forgiveness in his heart toward his brothers. See, family, their lack, of forget, their lack of understanding made Joseph weep. See, Joseph was, 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 was true. Joseph was, was, was being honest. Joseph had let it go. Joseph understood the will of God. Joseph understood that the obstacles that was placed in his way was only to make him strong. Joseph understood that all of the lies and the ditch digging, Joseph understood that all of the hurt and the pain that he had endured not was not given by God, but was allowed by God in order to make him stronger. What are you saying, Pastor Jones? I'm glad you asked because some of you have failed to understand that they're all saying that what 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 what, what you've gone through, it, it not only makes you strong, but it makes you who God wants you to be in his kingdom. See, some of you don't realize 
that because of that bad man, you've been able to, 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 to truly recognize a good man. Some of you have failed to realize that bad woman has made you recognize what a good woman is all about. Some of you have failed to recognize that a bad job caused you to appreciate a good job. Some of you have failed to recognize that when you were down, it made you appreciate the fact that you're now up. See, God only allows you to go through some stuff in order that you may become what he really wants you to be. And likewise, family, when it comes to the pain of, of, and the sting of, 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 of what people can do in your lives, when it comes to, to forgiving them, God is saying, listen, where you are now is only because of what you've been through. And if you were to be honest about it, some of you are in a whole lot better place than where you were some years ago. When you were in that pain, when you were in that bad relationship, when you were in that, on that bad job, when you were in that bad place emotionally, look at what God has brought you now. Look at what God is doing in your life. Look in the mirror and see who God has molded into are you too and now look at what God has done you only be you only who you are now because of what God has allowed you to go through and Joseph realized that if it had not been for the fact his brother sold him into slavery if it had not been for the fact that Pharaoh locked him up unjustly if it had not been that the cupbearer forgot to remember to tell Pharaoh about all that he had done if it had not been for all of that the people that are not only in Egypt but the people that are in all the lands around just might be starving and Joseph was able to recognize that it was only because of the struggle that I've gone through that now I've been able to help the people of God well God wants you to know the same thing it's only because of your struggle that you're able to bless those of God. It's only because of your struggle that you're able to give. It's only because of your struggle that you're able to love. It's only because of your struggle that you're able to forgive. You see, family, forgiving others is just like any other commandment that God gives to us. It can only be done as God gives us strength. Philippians 2, 12 and 13 says, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Let me stop there because see some folk, that's the problem. We don't want to work. We don't want to work hard. We don't want things to, to we, we don't want to have to put in some effort and some sweat. We just want things to happen. What well, the Bible is saying, you're not just going to get to a point of being able to forgive without having to sweat a little, without having to cry a little, without having to feel the weight of the burden of what was done in your life. The Bible says you got to work hard to show the results of your salvation. In other words, what God is doing in your life. You got to work hard to let them see the love that you, you didn't have a, some time ago. You got to work hard to let them see the tenderness of your heart that you didn't have some time ago. You got to work hard to let them see the fact that you can give now when before you couldn't, ki you couldn't give nothing. You got to work hard. And the, it goes on to say obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Watch this. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Let me stop there because, see, some of you, that might be the reason that you find it very difficult to, to forgive. That might be one reason that you find it very difficult to be able to give is because, watch this, maybe God is not working in you. 
Oh, somebody needed to hear that. I'm not saying that you're not saved. What I am saying is, is that you've put up so many walls. You've done, you, 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 you've closed so many doors that you won't even allow the Holy Spirit to come in and work in your heart. You won't even allow the Holy Spirit to bomb you in his, in, in, in his glory. You won't even allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Why? Because it's easier for you. It's better for you to hold that anger, to hold on to the malice. It's easier for you to do that than to put in the hard work in order that you and whoever else it is that you're holding this stuff against can be reconciled. Finally, the scripture makes it clear that one of the indications that I genuinely belong to the Lord is that he has changed my desires so that now I not only desire to do what I want, but I desire to do his will. And as Paul challenged the Philippians, we need to let the fact of our salvation be seen by others. See, family, as we pointed out before, reconciliation involves two people, but forgiveness can only involve one. To benefit family for God from God's forgiveness and be reconciled to Him, that requires repentance. But the forgiveness that makes reconciliation with God possible has been provided through Christ's sacrifice, and that forgiveness is unconditional. Hebrews 7 and 27 says, He offered a sacrifice once for all when he gave of himself. But notice, family, that, that, that though the forgiveness provided through the cross is unconditional, it was not provided without a cost, and it cost God's son his life. And likewise, family, forgiving your brothers and your sisters is going to cost. Forgiving, forgiving those that have offended you is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some pride. It's going to cost you some pain. It's going to cost you to be uncomfortable. It's going to cause you to, to, to look, uh, uh, look uh, belittled by some other folk because they don't understand how you can forgive someone that's done you like that. They don't forgive. They don't understand how you can forgive that man or woman who's cheated on you. They don't for understand how you can forgive someone who's lied on you. They don't understand how you can forgive someone who's put their hands on you. They don't understand how you can forgive someone who's cheated you out of something. They don't understand that. And when you forgive them, other folk might look at you and, and think that you're weak. They think that, that you're just a pushover. But let me share something with you. The Bible says that when God, when Jesus died, he died for all. And when he died for all, that meant that for you, he forgave your sins past, he forgave your sins present, and he forgave your sins future. So just like Jesus forgave our sins, God is saying to us, how can you not forgive your brothers and your sisters? Don't worry about what other folk might think. Don't worry about what other folk might say. The only person that you need to be worried about is God himself. Uh, Luke 9 and 23 says, what a, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and do this, follow me. That, that's hard work, y'all. Yes, it is, that's hard work. But God's power, family, is available, watch this, to enable me to forgive from the heart and forgive unconditionally. But watch this, in order to do it, I must be willing daily to deny myself and take up my cross. Daily choosing to forgive those who have offended me until the choice that I make daily becomes an unconditional attitude of my heart toward the person concerning their offense. Let me share something with you. That means every day I get up, I got to say I forgive them. When I get up the next day, I forgive them. 
When I get up the day following that, I forgive them. When I get up, Lord willing, next week, I forgive them. When I get up, Lord willing, next month, I forgive them. And I have to keep forgiving them every day I get up until one day it no longer is an issue in my heart. It's no longer an issue in my mind. I have to keep forgiving them. Watch this. The Bible says if Jesus can forgive you and I, then so can we forgive our brothers and sisters. And he does it daily. But not only that, family, our forgiveness has to be unending. It's right there in the text, verses 18 through 21. It says, his brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. It says, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Watch this. Am I God? You intended to harm me. Oh, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and he spoke kindly to them. Sam Storms made this statement as I prepare to move to a close. It says, we joyfully resolve never to throw the sin back into the face of the one who committed it. We promise never to hold it over their head, using it to manipulate or shame them. And we promise never to bring it up to others in an attempt to justify ourselves or to undermine their reputation. And lastly, we promise never to bring it up to ourselves as grounds for self-pity or to justify our resentment of the person who hurt us. Family, how do I know if I've forgiven someone? I'm glad you asked. First of all, we won't be angry with God. Two, we won't we won't want our brothers and our sisters to ever fear. Three, we, want, we don't want them to feel guilty about what they've done. Because guess what? We've all made mistakes. Fourth, we don't want them to be humiliated. How would you feel if when you mess up, someone puts all your business out in the street? Fifth, our forgiveness will be unconditional. That's how God is for us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, he died. He didn't choose to die after we chose to stop doing what we've been doing. He did it even knowing that we were going to do it. And last but not least, our forgiveness has to be, got to be, unending. Don't say you forgive somebody today, but then bring it back up tomorrow. Don't say you, you're going to let something go and then years down the road, you're bringing it back up because you still really haven't let it go. That's not what God is doing for you and I. The Bible suggests that not only does he forgive us, the Bible says that for he will no longer remember it as far as the east is from the west. Now let's understand something. That doesn't mean God forgot it. What that meant was he's not going to bring it up again. And that's what he expects from you and I. And family, if you can see yourself in those six points, I need for you to know today that you have finally gotten to a point of knowing that you've been able to forgive. But let me share this with you. If you find yourself lacking on any one of those points, I need for you to begin to pray. And then don't just pray. I need you to start putting feet to your prayer. 
and start asking God, whichever one of those points you may find difficulty with, you need to start asking God to give you the strength to deal with those particular shortcomings. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that when he said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that allows me to know that I can't do this thing by myself. And neither can you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for another expression of your love. We thank you for sharing your word with us today, Father. And I pray now in the name of Jesus that as only you can, that you would give us what we need to be forgiving. If nothing else, bring to, re to remembrance the fact that not only have you forgiven us, but you are forgiving us. Not past, but present tense. Now, Lord, build us up where we're, where we're weak. Allow us to be put into situations, Father, to where our, our focus can not only be on you, but that we might be able to grow in our faith in you. Now, Lord, if there be one that don't know you and the partner that's in, I pray now in the name of Jesus that something was said or done, that they would speak now, saying, what must I do to be saved? And I want them, and I pray in the name of Jesus that they understand, that they would but just confess with their mouth that you are Lord, believe in their hearts that you did die, but rose again on the third day morning, that they too shall be saved. We thank you, Father. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen, and thank God. Well, family, thank you so much for being with us on this morning. I pray again that something was said or done that would help you in your walk with Christ. For those of you that are members of New Hope, I want you to know we will be here at the church from 11 until 1 with drive through communion, give you an opportunity to come by and just uh, do a little fellowshipping with us. We praise God for those of you that, that will come. If you desire to bring your tithe and offering, we will also be here accepting that as well. But we thank you for your consistent support of New Hope. And we pray now in the name of Jesus that any and everything that we do not only brings glory to him, but it strengthens your life. And also, family, I do want to just say this. We are, if you will go to our website, uh, we are, uh, uh, are, are, are preparing to assist those that are, that, that are doing, uh, that are on the ground uh, for those that are in Southeast Texas, those that are in Louisiana. Uh, uh, as a result of Hurricane Laura, uh, we're going to be doing our best to assist and, and help bring about some stability and some reassurance that, that there are some people of God that loves them and that appreciates all that they're going through. So we are asking for your help. Uh, you can give by Cash App, uh, on our, our information is on our website, as well as uh, if you can mail it in, or uh, if, uh, if, if there's any questions that you may have uh, or concerns, by all means send us an email. We will respond to your email. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we thank God for all that you will consider and being a blessing to those that are going through now. We appreciate you, and don't ever forget, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you, and may God keep you, is our prayer.